Good morning, guys, and I am honored to be here. First of all, is everyone excited to give a toast yeah. to Harry Carey? And I know someone that's really excited. We're honored to have a Harry, the love of Harry's life. Dutchie, how you doing here today? Well, I'm doing okay for an old lady. <laughs> You're not old. Come on now. 90. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how does Dutchie look for 90 years old, right? Dutchie, you don't look a day over 45, I'd yeah, say. right. So, Dutchie, i got to say, yeah. you know, all these people here, you know, it's been almost 21 years since, unfortunately, we lost Harry. But what does it mean to have all these people here still celebrating his life it's, and legacy? It's really a thrill, honestly. And I sometimes just can't believe it. I mean, he's such an icon. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, he was a great guy. <laughs> yeah, he really was. And, and also a really skilled broadcaster, too. Oh People talk, talk about the stories he would tell. But he was so good at it. I know. And today, they never tell a story. They don't do anything. Just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> tell us what you really Boring. think, Dutchie. Yeah. <laughs> Dutchie, I got to ask. We talked right before the World Series, but I haven't seen you since then. What do you think Harry would have thought when the Cubs finally did in 2016? Well, he would have been able to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because the doctor had some orders. Yeah, the doctor gave him orders, no more drinking. And he said, well, when can I have a drink? And he said, when the Cubs will in the World Series. <laughs> Harry missed it. <laughs> Harry missed it just, uh, by, just by a few years, yeah, of course. Yeah. What do you think it would have meant to Harry to see all these people here out here today? Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Honest. No, I think he would have realized that, you know, he really was a popular guy. That's all there's to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I don't have a drink in front of me, but you got one. Here, toast to Harry Carey. A toast to Harry. Oh, I got a Budweiser. This is perfect. To Harry Carey. Guys, plenty more from Harry Carey's in a bit. How you doing, everybody? Gambling here with Harry Carey on a toast to Harry Carey. I couldn't win, though. It's Prohibition theme. We're going to have more on this in a bit. We're at Harry Carey's. Guys, you excited to be here this morning? It's the 21st toast to Harry Carey. Grant DePorter, this year you're bringing the Prohibition theme, aren't you? Yeah, it's the 100th anniversary of Prohibition, and our building has a lot of history tied to Prohibition. It was a speakeasy. Frank Nitti and his family owned the building for 30 years, so we decided to embrace that. Prohibition did not stop Harry. He was alive back then. He had to limit his drinking to days that start with a T. Tuesdays, Thursdays, today and tomorrow. <laughs> I like that. I love the flappers, too. Got the Harry look here going with the, with the masks and everything. Uh, Grant, I got to talk to people because I think a lot of people know Harry as a Cubs announcer. And I grew up a Cubs fan. I did, too. But a lot of people out there need to remember that Harry worked for both sides of town. Yeah, he was with the Sox first from 1971 to 1981. So he represents both sides. And, you know, baseball for both teams starts tomorrow. So we thought well, this would be also a kickoff rally for baseball. Baseball. All right, so what do you have planned here? Because the, the big toast is this afternoon, right? Yeah, the toast is right at 6.30. We have Bonnie Hunt here. We have Robert Smigel and his puppet Triumph. And <laughs> Ryan Dempster is leading it with his Harry Carey impersonation. Ron Kittle and Chris Chelios alongside Dutchie. Oh, Chelly here, too. That's awesome. All right, who does the best Harry Carey impression of the bunch? Anyone? Anyone? No one can do it as good as the original? Putting people on the spot? I guess I'll have to do it. Back to you guys in the studio. We are celebrating. Are we celebrating baseball season? Yeah! And a toast to Harry Carey. We mentioned in the last report that Harry, of course, spent time as a Cubs broadcaster, but before that, as a White Sox broadcaster. So we're talking with Ron Kittle, 1983, uh, Rookie of the Year, All-Star for the Win and Ugly White Sox. And uh, you knew Harry going through the organization, right? Well, I knew him when I got traded over to the White Sox organization as a young minor leaguer. He had interviewed me in spring training, so you knew his personality. I watched TV. I know what was going on. And he was, definitely had a following. Uh, not all of them were baseball fans. They were more drinking fans. Right. But uh, he definitely had a following. And he had a passion for the game. And uh, that's why his cult, I call it a cult, still goes on today. 21st annual toast of Harry Carey. I was going to say, a cult right behind me. Are we more baseball fans or drinking fans? Oh, yeah, we like that. Obviously, the start of baseball season, the White Sox are going through a great new progression with a rebuild going on. The Cubs have had some successful years. Just a great time to be in the city with both teams kind of on the on the rise, if you will. You know, I'm on the other side of the block right now. I'm in, in the stands, so I'm looking to keep warm on these early morning games. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, Chicago's a great city for baseball, period, both sides. You know, I want success for both of them, obviously. My paycheck signed by the Chicago White Sox, so I like that to be a little bit more right. prominent. But we got some young kids with some good talent. Uh, they're going to they're gonna peak. They were kids, now they're men, and they're going to start playing a little bit better, and uh, uh, they're going to be better than last year. But it's nice, you know, when you start talking about the rivalry. You know, both sides want to win, but yeah. I think the fans worry about it more than the players do because it's just a game. you got to play hard. You somebody's going to win. How would, would Harry have survived a Red Line World Series? Or, uh... you, you know what? I don't know. He might have just stayed on a freeway and, <laughs> and not even gone to the booth. But we were joking earlier there was a, a bet that one day Harry would fall out of the announcing booth. And they had
had it ponied up to about ten thousand dollars. <laughs> what inning he was going to fall out on, who was pitching, or what team, and uh, and he was all for it. Yeah. So and I ponied my money up into it. You got, you got to play part of the bets, Ron. Thank you so much for the thank thing, you. Dino. You do a great impersonation. Why don't you send it to break here? We'll be right back after this on the jam. Holy cow! Yeah.